Number 57. What is the greatest average speed of blood flow at 37 degrees Celsius in an artery of radius 2 millimeters if the flow is to remain laminar? What is the corresponding flow rate? Take the density of the blood to be 1,025 kilogram per cubic meter. All right. So uh, it, when we're talking about flows uh, trying to remain laminar or turbulent, we have to think about the Reynolds number. All right. There's a simple decision rule. Basically that when the Reynolds number labeled N sub R, when it's greater than 3000, it's considered to be turbulent. When the Reynolds number is less than, two, uh, yeah, less than uh, 2000, it's considered to be laminar. And anything in between is kind of a little mix of both. Could be turbulent, could be laminar, whatever. So this is turbulent laminar. Now, the question is asking us, um, that the flow has to remain laminar and we want to find, and we want to find the greatest average speed. Okay, so first I know I'm going to be dealing with this Reynolds value uh, equation or Reynolds number equation. So the Reynolds number equation is going to be 2 multiplied by the density of that flowing fluid, multiplied by the velocity of that flowing fluid, multiplied by the radius of the tube that the fluid is flowing in, divided then by the viscosity of that flowing fluid. So we're talking about blood, all right? We have all the values we're going to need, all right? Just we have to look up the uh, uh, viscosity of blood at 37 degrees Celsius and we want to find the velocity. Now remember, we want to find the greatest average speed, okay, or greatest velocity basically, uh, that uh, blood can have while remaining laminar. So that means that the, basically the upper limit, right, of laminar flow is a Reynolds number of 2000. So what I'm gonna do is when I start solving, that's basically gonna be my Reynolds number. So I know this, we know the density, we know the radius, right? They told us the radius, but that's a millimeter. And we know the uh, viscosity. So just solve this thing for V, right? All you got to simply do, just shift the variables. What's ever in the bottom on the right moves up to the top on the left. What's ever in the top on the right moves down into the bottom on the left. This is just simple cross multiplication. Put your little division line and voila, okay? I moved everything away from the V, simple. So now here's the equation just solve. So now here is V will be equal to the viscosity. So we had to look that up 2.084 times 10 to the minus three. The Reynolds number is going to be 2000. Like I said, this is the upper limit of that laminar flow. And then it's going to be two multiplied by the density of 1025. And then the radius is going to be remembered has to be in meters. So divide that millimeter value by 1000. So it works out to be 0.002 and then just throw it on into the calculator. So here we have 2.084 times 10 raised to the minus three times 2000, divided now by in parentheses two times 1025 times 0 0.002. And what do we have? So here we have now a value of about 1.01 or 1.02, I guess, uh, yeah, three sig figs is fine. So 1.02. 1.02, and this is in meters per second. Okay, that's the velocity. Use standard units, standard units get spit out. So that's the velocity. So that's the greatest average speed that it can obtain, about a meter a second. Uh, so that takes care of, it's not really letter A, but that I'll call it letter A, that's the first question. Second question is then asking us, uh, does it ask, yeah, what is the corresponding flow rate then? So we gotta think, well, we just found velocity, Okay, how do I connect it to flow rate? Oops, sorry guys. Must be very important today. Um, so we have to just connect it to this equation over here on the right-hand side, right? So we have Q will be equal to the cross-sectional area of the tube multiplied by the average velocity of the fluid through the tube. So if I want to find Q, I got to know these two things. Expanding on the area though, right? We can realize we do know the area because area is just pi r squared, all right? Then multiplied by the average velocity. So do we know the radius of the artery? Of course we do, right? We use it over here. So now all we have to do is plug in the values, right? This is nice. So 0 0.002 squared times in that velocity value of 1.02. And you can also then, I mean, if you wanted, you could have also taken this and substituted this on in for your velocity, right? To find an overall equation. Uh, you can, if you want, if you got to know what the equation is, that's how you would do it. But if we want to just know the number, all we got to do is just plug in these values. So after I plug them into the calculator, I'm doing that right now. Actually, let me use the more exact value. Hold on. So pi 
times 0 0.002 squared, and then multiplied by that exact answer from before for the velocity. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. So uh, in terms of rounding, so 1.28, 1.28 times 10 raised to the minus five. And this is in cubic meters per second because I use the standard unit. So standard units get spit out. If you need units other than that, feel free to convert. They don't ask uh, what units in particular. So that would be an answer. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.